Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. This is lecture 17 and where we'll discuss um, matter waves uh, and particularly the de Broglie hypothesis and the Davison-Germer experiment. So in the last lecture we talked about uh, a double slit experiment which uh, in principle we showed can be used to distinguish between wave-like and particle-like behavior for quantum particles such as photons and even electrons um, but in fact it's that double slit experiment is actually very difficult to achieve for electrons and um, uh, it was not done actually until you know a decade or two ago um, in the the first experiment which was actually done to show that that things which we normally think of as particles like electrons are actually also have wave-like properties was um, the Davison-Germer experiment okay which we'll get to um, and it was preceded by just a few years uh, by just a few years by uh, the hypothesis of Louis de Broglie so Louis de Broglie was a PhD student in Paris um, when quantum mechanics was really just being born, it was uh, all these ideas were coming out, and also uh, special relativity was just, it was a new theory, just a couple decades old, and so he, in his PhD studies, he was um, very intrigued, as many other scientists were at his time, uh, by the dual nature of light, uh, the fact that it exhibits particle-like behavior, as in the photoelectric effect, which had already been. These, those experiments had already been done and explained by Einstein. And the wave-like properties, which as we discussed in the last lecture, uh, were shown multiple times, in particular by uh, experiments similar to the double slit experiment. And so he's very intrigued with that. And he was also impacted by Einstein's theory of special relativity, which had been uh, just recently, again, um, in the last couple of decades before him, had been um, proposed and disc and uh, and uh, proven and and uh, had become part of the physics um, kind of standard physics lore and so he was uh, he was very interested in these these topics as a PhD student as any good student would be and so he sort of put together sort of a picture a hypothesis using these two uh, sort of things and in particular, he, he looked at the photoelectric effect experiments, which, um, which as we showed a couple few lectures ago, the, uh, demonstrated that the energy of a photon is actually quantized, and it's given by um, Planck's constant times the, f the frequency of the photon, which, and if you just assume, uh, if, if, if we assume or if we um, uh, accept that uh, that the, that the light wave travels at the speed of light c, uh, as Einstein hypothesized, then we can write this as hc over lambda. Okay, here I'm using the symbol gamma for a photon. Okay, that's just a symbol. And we can um, obviously um, uh, rewrite this, this expression, okay, uh, as h over lambda is equal to um, the energy of the photon divided by the speed of light. Now at the same time, we have special relativity, which gives us basically from the energy momentum invariant, we have that the total energy of a particle is equal to the um, square root of the sum of the momentum in, in energy units and the rest mass in energy units. Okay, the rest energy. And um, but if we again for photons which have zero mass. Um, then this just reduces to this expression uh, that the that the momentum of a photon is equal to its energy divided by um, speed of light c. So if we put these two these two things are equal to each other, and so we can um, we can basically set them equal to each other, and uh, we come with lambda the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum. And what de Broglie wondered was whether this relationship that the wavelength of a particle is equal to Planck's constant divided by its momentum could be true for matter as well. 